Kevin. Not only is Iron Man 3 the third installment in the Iron Man franchise, the follow-up to the hugely successful Marvel's The Avengers, so how does it fit into what we're calling the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Uh, you know, when we started developing Iron Man 3, we knew that it, it would be coming out a year after The Avengers. Uh, and while The Avengers hadn't come out yet, we hadn't even finished it yet. Um, what was important to us is that it worked on two levels. It worked as a as sort of a capper to an Iron Man trilogy, but also that it worked as a direct follow-up to The Avengers. Um, and what Shane was able to do in his, uh, in his script and directing the movie was really embrace the character of Tony Stark, really delve deeper into Tony than we had, deeper than, than any of the films since Iron Man 1, but at the same time, let the massive sort of repercussions of Avengers um, reverberate through, because Avengers was such a hit. Um, that we uh, figure that majority of the audience going to see Iron Man 3 will have seen Avengers, perhaps even more than had seen the first two Iron Man films. So it was very important that it connected that story. So it really is a unique movie that, that is sort of a sequel to two other franchises. And at the same time, and most importantly, stands apart and on its own, which is the credit of, uh, of Shane Black. Mm. Thank you. This question is for Shane. What was it like to take over the directorial reins from Jon Favreau, and how does your interpretation dif differ from his? <coughs> You know, taking over from John Favreau is is a little daunting because he's a, uh, a force to be reckoned with. Now, um, he's also a sweet guy, so there wasn't really a lot of friction. It was more about him giving me some real good advice, and on set as an actor, I was able to draw from him, and he was incredibly generous and gracious in giving me uh, ideas and options and things that showed that he'd done this before. Now, I, the good news from this, too, was that I don't think that John and I have specifically very different ideas about Iron Man. I think we both like a more grounded, mm -hmm. kind of realistic character. Uh, I think we like playing with the idea of taking something very mythic and powerful that starts to get dark and then lightening up and sort of not taking it too seriously, taking it back a step into satire. These are the things that he loves, too. So it was really, to me, a dream collaboration where I was able to access this guy who was an invaluable resource along the way. Hugely popular worldwide. What can you say about why the franchise has resonated so strongly with fans globally? You know, listen, the, the success of the movies uh, is in no s small part due to the fact that the fans have embraced it. And when we set out to produce one of these films, we, we start always with the source material, always directly from the comics. We, we do reinterpret, we do change some things. Um, but when we change them, it's usually for a very good reason. And it's usually to, in an attempt to get at the heart of what the comic was all about. And I think fans around the world really respond to that. And now, as we've had three Iron Man films and the Avengers have come out, um, you now have fans, really deeply loyal fans, uh, who are fans from the movies, from before, the, you know, who hadn't read the comics or the movies had brought them to the comics. And for years and years, it was always the comics that brought them to the movies. And now we see uh, that sort of spinning. Um, and that just sort of showcases the loyalty of the fans around the world, that they're now embracing sort of a new continuity within the movies, still tipping our hat to the comics, pulling all the great ideas from the comics, but uh, you know, setting out on sort of a new uh, cinematic uh, continuity turf. Shane, you briefly addressed this in the press conference about having directed um, Robert Downey Jr. and Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, and you've had the chance to work with him again on this film. How is this experience different? Did you enjoy it more or less, and how so? Um, it was a bit more frenetic. Uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang felt more like sort of a fun lark that took 35 days. <laughs> and this, this is at least twice that. Um, and I was tired on the day 30 on Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. I didn't want to keep going. I said, okay, just get me to the finish line. I wasn't even the halfway point on this, so, you know. Uh, but Robert is a very powerful presence, and he r makes people rise to the occasion. He demands of other people that they commit as fully and as, uh, you know, energetically as he does. So he kept us going. He kept us alive and alert and awake, and um, hopefully we kept the balls juggling to make this movie unpredictable enough that we had this sense that we're making something interesting, something fun and surprising. And that was great, too. Robert is a surprising actor. The reason I like working with him is you never quite know what you're going to get, you know. He could come up one day with this, next day with that, and it's usually something that leaves you stunned that you didn't think of it, so. So, Kevin, I mentioned the Marvel Cinematic Universe before <laughs> touching on that again. Does it ever give you pause to think how this franchise has paid off and paved the way for other similar franchises? Secondly, what does this mean to you personally as a producer and as the president of Marvel Studios? Uh, 
it all started with Iron Man 1, right? That was the first film that, that Marvel Studios uh, self-produced. We'd certainly been involved in the Spider-Man franchise before that and the X-Men franchise before that. But that was really the first one that allowed Marvel um, and myself personally as a producer to put our mark on, on our films and our properties and the way that we wanted to see them made. And in fact, the audience embraced that so wholeheartedly, really gave us confidence to, to plow forward with the entire cinematic universe. Um, uh, uh, with the Hulk and with Iron Man 2 and Thor and Captain America all leading to Avengers. And in the same way, it gave us confidence to now post Avengers, and the Iron Man 3 being the first one of our next phase, um, gave us the confidence to do the unexpected, to go with our guts in ways that audiences may or may not predict, but uh, that keeps, uh, sort of keeps them and us on our toes. Um, we never want to get predictable. And uh, the easiest way to not be predictable is to have Shane Black behind the camera. And to the both of you, last question. What do you want audiences to get out of Iron Man 3? Do you think it will exceed their expectations? <clears throat> I, I hope that they get uh, something from Iron Man 3 audiences, get something from Iron Man 3 that is beyond just um, a kind of a rock and roll movie. I hope that they see it as something that's more of a stew of elements, that is at times thrilling, other times can be sort of irreverent or funny ultimately that stands the myth on its head a little bit because we want to have some kind of a of a sense of satire running through this as well and so I, I love the notion of trying to just be a little smart and if they come away thinking we enjoyed that we got a thrill out of it but you know what it was that wasn't a dumb movie either that had a couple things that may have resonated with me as being smart I'd be happy with that Great. Thank you so much. good answer okay thank Thanks, you guys. <clears throat>